Hi guys, welcome back to my strategy series for Axis and Allies Global 1940 Second Edition. Today's strategy I have called Green Shores or Operation Green Shores. This is a uh, multinational um, strategy. It uh, was with US and Russia. And I've been mentioning I will be doing my Russia strategy series. This is why we will be doing this today. So in a sense, this is part one of my Russia strategy. Now, in the turn sequence um, for the countries involved, which is Russia, Japan, and the United States, um, I didn't set up China. There's no need. I didn't set up UK or anybody else. There is no need. Uh, but in the turn sequence, Russia goes first. Uh, now, before I go into start doing some movements, but the object of this operation, I call it Operation Green Shores, is because America is going to be here, here, and possibly here, depending on the reactionary play of the Japan player. Also, you'll notice I am not using my painted pieces as requested. Um, it was mentioned that uh, sometimes it was a little difficult to tell um, on these strategy series who's who. So, now that we got that going... The first thing you're going to do, I these people here, these units, should never go this way. Uh, what's going to happen is I I have really, really beefed up my Cobra Kai uh, for the Europe side. And I, I have not yet been defeated. And I can honestly say, well, when I went to Vegas uh, a week or two ago, um, Desert Emerald and Leatherneck really did, I believe, in my opinion, the best defensive for Moscow that could humanly be possible. I mean, it was being defended with not only Russia was in Moscow, there was fighters from Anzac in Moscow, there was fighters from UK in Moscow, there was UK uh, landed in Finland, um, there, was, there was so much going on and Moscow still fell pretty early in the game. There's just so with that said, and I will go over that again uh, later, uh, an updated version of my Cobra Kai, which uh, like I said, is just it's just pretty deadly. So there is no reason to move these troops back to Moscow because they will not make it there in time. There is no way, um, especially these, these, you know, it's one, two, three, four, five year, you're not even. You're not even off the Pacific side of the board yet, and um, you're just not going to make it. So, turn one is everybody needs to move up. Or depending on how you're looking at the board, move down. That's it for that's it for Russia on this turn. Now, next uh, we know as Japan goes. Um, I've mentioned before I do not recommend a J1. If they do a J1, this Operation Green Shores will just be done two turns sooner and you will beat Japan that much faster. So we will assume that Japan is not going to do a J1 and they were just going to be doing whatever they're going to be doing. Um, so I'm not going to move any Japan's pieces. That's pointless. We all know they're going to go that way. Um, but for the, for the sake of argument, it's just uh, here. Let's, let's move a couple. We're just going to say these planes went and did something. You know, that mech and the artillery, they need to go this way. Um, they, Japan doesn't have a lot of ground units to start the game. So they, uh, they really can't, you know, leave these here. They really need these. Now, granted, you just moved all these forward. Um, they will be leaving more units here. And I don't recommend staying back because you don't want them to accidentally, or not accidentally, but you don't want to accidentally lose your guys because they decided to attack. Then, you know, it's very difficult if they're going to come in here and attack 18 units and two anti aircraft, especially this early in the game. But they will be going to make some money. So let's just assume here, let's just uh, let's pull that guy away. I don't know. Let's just take let's just take half of these away for now. Uh, if it if it was my turn, what I like to do is this transport. I like to pick up a couple units, and I just like to relocate them. 
Så, uh... Okay, that's good enough. It's just, uh, like I said, we're, we're just not a Japan strategy. I just want to thin out the herd a little bit, kind of more realistic of what it would be like in game. Now, America's turn. So we're now going to shift my camera over. We're not going to be looking at this half of the board anymore. Uh, that way I don't have to keep moving the camera anymore. So we're just going to put it right here. You can barely see America. That's, that's all you need to see. And uh, you can see uh, right here. That's pretty much this is our, our working area for this operation. Now America uh, should not be at war. Like I said, if Japan did a J1, um, this operation is that much easier because what happens now, we are limited to only placing three units on this side of the board. All the other units have to be placed on the other side of the board and then march the way over here on the next turn. So for turn one, the units on the other side of the board, this fighter, this bomber, this tank, these mechs will be coming over here. The artillery and the guys will now be in Central America to move, to move over on the following turn. So I know you can't really see it. Uh, let me see if I can scoot this over a little bit more. I really don't want to have to keep moving the camera back and forth. Let's see if I can get this in there. That should be okay. It's good enough. You can't really see yet. I'll, I'll put the units here in the, in the C zone. Um, that way we don't. That way you can kind of see better. Like I said, you really just don't want to move the camera back and forth each time I do a move. And unfortunately, it's tapped out where I can put it. Okay, so these are the starting units. Can you see everybody? Yeah, okay, we can see everybody now. Okay, so the bomber comes over. Planes come over. Actually, the planes are actually in the C zone with these two planes. Now, the transport that is here. America is going to, reason I'm doing a little bit of America, I don't want to give the impression that this many units are, will be here because they will not be here. America does not need two anti-aircraft guns, but it doesn't hurt to send over one to Honolulu. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. America's by EF-52, two carriers, battleship. Now we have, these are loaded. Not used to playing with my non-magnetic pieces either, so this is kind of a little uh, lame. Okay, that is America. Now, of course, you want to put your blocker here just in case. That doesn't do anything from Carolina Islands, but there's nothing really in Carolina Islands to worry about at this time. Turn sequence goes through again. We are back at Russia's turn. Russia is going to do absolutely nothing at this time. Japan now sees kind of a little bit of a threat on their shores. Um, now this is this is kind of kind of good at the same time. With this, the Japan players has two options now. They have the option to keep on trucking down, trying to make money, or they're going to come back, not make that money. They're going to come back and, and fortify because they see. Um, they, they see the offensive here. Um, I, I, I've done this before without tilting my hand, but I, I found this operation to be harder when I don't tilt my hand. Because what happens is Japan do, does not see a threat. They go down there, they make their money, and they just buy more units. So in a, in a sense, if they retreat now, I have to fight those units. If I don't tilt my hand and they go out and they're scattered about, they're making more money, 
They're just going to buy more units for me to fight. So I will, in a, in a sense, have to fight those units that they just bought. And now all the other units can come back and I got to fight those too. By tilting my hand a little bit, what that does, you know, like I said, it's all how the Japan player goes. But I found it to be easier because they will bring their units back and I have to fight less units. So don't think by not tilting your hand all those Japan units are going to be that way because they will generally come back and you'll be fighting them and you don't want to like I said be fighting double the units you don't want to be you don't want to battle this and then the next turn their units are coming back while you're all crippled so I like I said I found it better just tilt your hand a little bit that way you can reactionary play off of them and not them reactionary play off of you okay because you, you are now forcing them to make a decision. And then once you see that decision, you can uh, proceed on. So that was turn two. For Russia did nothing, like I said. And okay, Japan, they, they will still be going into China. I always do this, but we're talking about China. They're still going to be marching over there. Um, probably still going for the money islands at this time. Okay. We are out turn two now for America. Now, we are still under the restrictions of these factories, unfortunately. So the ones that were in Central America came up. We were able to buy three ships. We put three guys, they are in central. And we have a bomber and artillery that are on east. Bomber and artillery for east. So they will move up on the next turn. Now this is where we kind of get started. Um, <clears throat> depending on what happened in Korea and Manchuria. Because uh, we start, we do got to start getting this uh, ready for America. Depending on how it, how it looks here, might be the time to take it. The, what Russia has to do for this operation, uh, Russia has to do a couple things. Russia has to take Korea. And Russia also needs to supply a naval base. Because what's going to happen is America is also going to supply a naval base. And they're going to put a naval base here. Russia will put a naval base. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it's in sea zone five. Because then what we can do is we can, we, we can, we can shuck. Okay. In addition to the naval base being here, that's one, two, three for our landing for Japan. Also, another reason why we need a naval base here is because once we do a uh, sea battle here, these um, ships gonna, are going to need to be repaired. This is the fastest place. They can't afford to go one, two back or one, two back and still not being re repaired. They need to be repaired on the next turn. They need to go to here and that's, and this, uh, naval base will take care of them. Okay. So, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. That's, that's a purchase later on the line. To which I say, to say for the argument, we are going to wait one more turn. Um, so now Japan does this turn. Because Russia doesn't need to do anything. Whereas Russia right now is really trying to defend Europe from Germany. Uh, the Cobra Kai, uh, we're on turn three. That means Germany would have, have taken Ukraine by now and have control of that factory. Now, America's turn. America's nest purchase. Remember, these guys move up from Central. Bomber moves up. Artillery that was in... Eastern is now in Central. This side we are putting Battleship and two transports. The bomber was bought. This is in Central. And a, uh, artillery was bought and put in Central.
Now, I know people are asking or thinking, well, what about Europe? What about Europe? Yes, Europe is... When America is not at war, America cannot do anything on Europe's side. Here, we are free to do whatever we want. Um, now, I have not tipped my hand yet about being in Alaska. Uh, everybody is over here. Um, that way, they don't know which way I'm going. They don't know if I'm going to Honolulu. They don't know, you know, where. They have no idea what I'm doing. But if you are building this on the Europe, it's just kind of, you're just kind of stuck over there. In addition to, if you do this correctly, at the time Moscow falls, Japan will fall. Okay, I know a lot of people think the game's over when you lose Moscow. A lot of people think the game over is over when you lose Japan. But let me tell you, the game is not over when they both get lost at the same time. Japan will always, this 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 will always make Japan crumble. It's just like uh, Cobra Kai, you will always lose Moscow. There's just no way. And then what that happens is, once the Pacific side of the board is won by the Allies, not only, you know, you're going to have all this income, uh, you will see how fast uh, putting money, now that you put this money onto the Europe side, how fast Europe is really not that powerful. Because what will happen is we have, we have Anzac at full income, being able to do whatever. You have uh, UK Pacific being able to go up toward, back toward Moscow for a liberation. You will have UK Europe being able to go through uh, Finland to uh, liberate. So uh, it's just, this is the ticket. If, if America is putting their money and resources in Europe and letting Japan run amok at the same time, uh, Cobra Kai is taking Moscow. Uh, the, the allies are doomed, are doomed. This is, this is a way that could really tip the game as far as we are even right now, but the allies will be stronger, especially, um, for with the tournament rules for young grasshopper, he's given the allies such an incredible amount of extra money. Um, you, once you squash Japan by turn six, uh, it's a, it's an allied game for sure. There's, there's just no way around the allies winning the game. If you do this. Okay. Let's get back on. So we are now on, that was the end of turn three. So now we are at war now. We, we can de declare war, which means now we have a uh, bigger income. Now this is the time that Russia needs to clear this out. When I say this, not I don't care about Manchuria. I care about Korea. Now, let me explain why Korea is important. guys over there okay korea is in push just take we'll take off four of these let's say we lost what is it oh i grabbed five let's say we lost five guys it's fine korea is is important for this invasion uh, because what's going to happen is when these when these carriers end up over here the planes when you leave here the planes cannot participate in a land battle they can only participate in the naval battle and you, we're bringing over three carriers, and we want to absorb those hits. We don't want to have to not tip our carriers. The problem is, the minute you tip a carrier, it is damaged, and the planes cannot land. Well, they can only move one space. So the only safe landing spot for those planes to land is Korea. If you do not have Korea, and you tip your carriers, and you win that battle, all of your fighters are going to be auto-killed. Auto that's not a good situation. What we want to do is give them safe haven to land. So during this naval battle, you can absorb those six hits at no cost of, you know, your attacking dice. It's just that six hits you can take off with absolutely no worries. Those planes will land here. Then on the next time those planes are here, when you want to attack the mainland, it's one, two, three, four. It's great. Okay, this, but you have to secure Korea. Now, America, with all of its money and glory, because we are there now, we have this by a naval base. I'm not going to move all these people. You see where I'm going with this. Okay, you, you, do, you make sure 
Now you bought, you're gonna buy your transports now. Um, generally, I like seven. Now we already had one, two, three, four. Okay, like I said, you see where I'm going now. You make sure that you have corresponding units. Okay, you have, you're gonna have seven guys or infantry and you're gonna supply those with the artillery. Remember the artillery was moving forward. So you're gonna supply, you're gonna have a one-to-one -one ratio for guy and artillery or a tank. Um, these these mechs are here just in case, just in case now we wanna do any any drop-offs. Uh, we, maybe we need to reinforce Korea. Maybe um, uh, Japan did a counterattack, and I'm only down to a few guys on, on Korea. That that's fine, but maybe we want to drop off a couple more. So you know, we got the we got the mechs. We can drop off some mechs here if needed, and then um, you know, to help them out. And plus, the mechs, you know, we can be driving around uh, liberating some of the uh, Chinese territories. Now, the bombers will always be here in Alaska. That's because they can go one, two, three, four, attack in the naval battle, and then they can land here at five, or if need be. Um, they could always go to six, but this you just should always keep everybody together. Um, and another thing, like I said, Russia does. Now, Russia is going to fall. Okay, uh, we're we're getting close now. We'll just say we're we're on turn five ish. Okay, all the all, all these units here are now here because I was I was turn four. I bought this. I bought a bunch of transports. Okay, plus anything else. I mean, you you have so much money now. You probably put some stuff on the Europe side too. Um, but everybody's here now. Okay. In addition to, in the meantime, if Japan put any any blockers up, you um, you need to um, be ready to to deal with those. Um, so you maybe you have a couple ships here, maybe you have a couple ships here, but the majority will be here. Now, before, like I said, before Russia falls. Okay. As you as a Russia player, don't not do this um don't think you're gonna have a couple extra units and you're gonna save moscow let me tell you you're not gonna save moscow what you need to do is make sure this goes according to plan and you need to put a naval base it could be here it could be here it could be here it just needs to be in this c zone okay it needs to be in this c zone because like I said we need to we need to be able to do a quick repair for our American units. In addition to, um, we, need to we need to be able to shuck. Okay, because once once we have this, now now sometimes we go back a little bit. Sometimes they might start fortifying and fortifying and fortifying, which is totally fine. Which is totally fine. You just have to, you know, we'll be bringing more stuff over. But in the meantime, we can shuck land in Korea. And we can still be having units going this way while we're still preparing for our attack here. So we just got to make sure that this is here. <clears throat> um, here, an example here, we don't want to put the naval base here because what happens is if we have to use this as our as our port uh, of origin, their bombers can reach it. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is out of range from the bombers from the mainland. So, because like I, I tried it here before, and because there's, there's more points, there's more uh, execution points, but you are in range of bombers. So if you have some transports here, they you are always vulnerable. Here, like I said, it's a little bit more out of range from everything, but you still have the one, two, three for a hit. In addition to you, you have the you have the shuck. So I think that really uh, wraps up, like I said, I call it Operation Green Shores, just because this is green, this will be green, because America is green. Um, there's, uh, like I said, uh, Honolulu, just make sure, uh, you know, keep keep a blocker up. Uh, depending on if they start doing some Carolina Islands, you will have to, uh, some of these resources will have to go over there. Um, it's just, you are limited to your buys because if you are not at war. Now remember, you do it, if a J1 is done to you, and you're making all that money, and this factory is upgraded from a three to a to a ten. Oh, this this will happen so much faster. I mean, you will just turn four. I've had Japan on like I've taken Tokyo on turn four. 
but we will be looking at an average of turn six. Maybe, maybe turn seven, but it should be by turn six, which is at the same time Moscow is going to fall. Moscow is always going to fall turn six. I said maybe, maybe, maybe turn seven. Um, just make sure uh, don't you don't lose this. Now, if if let's go back a little bit. If you guys have not taken Korea yet, and all all these guys are here, and, J and Japan thinks it's going to be funny to like drop a couple guys off, off, a couple guys off over here. Don't worry about it. Don't break your lines. Don't do not do not disengage these 18, 20 units by going over here and going over here. You need these guys in a big group. So if Japan wants to wipe them out, you know, you have, you have 18 dice rolling against them in addition to the six and the aircraft shots you're gonna get provided they use uh, any air support. Do not worry about this. What's gonna happen is, like I said, we have these mechs over here. All we have to do as soon as we go to war is we'll drop them off. Now remember this too. In the turn sequence, Russia, you have to take this first because Russia needs to be at war with Japan. Russia can declare war with Japan on any turn in the game. They cannot, however, declare, declare war on any powers on the Europe side of the board, but they are free to clear to declare war on Japan on any turn. The thing is, you they have to be at war before you can land on any of these territories, okay? So make sure, like say they don't take Korea and they never went went to war and you think, oh, I'm just gonna come over here and drop off a, a few things or I'm gonna come over here and, and help liberate these because Japan did, well, you can't, you, you can't do that. You have to, Japan or uh, Moscow is first in the turn sequence. They need to make sure, you need to make sure they are at war before you can help them. That's why I said, but that should always happen because they have to take Korea. If they do not take Korea, it's it gets really dicey. It gets really dicey because you have the potential to lose all your planes. And you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be taking hits on planes and your carriers. You want to be taking hits on your carriers. Let them sink. That's six free hits. Land your planes. Planes. And then landing here, in addition to landing here, this is not an original Russian territory. So having American units here does not affect their national objective of five IPCs, okay? This is, so you can land, America can land here and not be taking away any money from Russia. Okay, so I uh, think that's it. Uh, like I said, it says it works great. Um, you just have to be conscious of your Japan player. Uh, reactionary play is always a key in my strategies. Uh, you have to be able to, you know, see what they're doing and and change, you know, change your purchases as necessary. But the overall objective is you want to have minimum <clears throat> seven, seven transports. So make sure you always have your guys set up accordingly. You don't want to accidentally be ready for your invasion and you realize, oh, two of the transports have to come half loaded because you don't have the, the proper, um, the proper denominations of the units. Remember bombers are always really good here. You can hit the sea zone and land. Um, again, I just can't stress this enough. You, with Korea is very is very important. Now, you will once you start doing this a lot to the same players, um, it it kind of does change the game a little bit because what's going to happen is Japan will start, and I say this because I do it. I I will. Oh, yeah, and that, that's the thing. You are negating the Mongolian rule, but that's totally fine. But as Japan now, Japan might start activating. The Mongolian rule and wiping these out as soon as possible. Um, and that's one of the things I do as a the Japan player because uh, I, I, I've, I've done this many times to people and uh, I see how devastating it is. So when I see it being prepared, um, definitely take care of that. And I'll go over that on a Japan video. Um, of course, all of my strategies, they are counter strategies. Um, Again, but except for the Cobra Kai, uh, man, that's uh, that's really hard to beat. Um, now you can definitely make it harder on Axis from doing that. Um, just like you can make it harder on the on the on the Allied from doing this, um, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. It just the the problem is when Russia starts 
wasting their time dealing with this. They're really not making any money. So it's it's kind of like a, a catch-22. Um, so it, they, they're not going to be as strong. So if you lose more equipment over here, it, it's kind of like it's not, you know, it's not the same scenario as if you were fighting a strong Japan. But I don't want to keep uh, rambling on. Uh, we will do the next part of the um, strategy for Russia next. And that will be just for the Europe side. I just wanted to make sure we just covered this. I've been talking about Operation Green Shores. And I think I've really explained about, about what it is. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free. I will get back to you. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.